this is the situation uh, currently going on in Baltimore. And the timing was a little interesting. Right about the time John Harbaugh was ready to meet with the media, Lamar Jackson decided, you know what? I'm going to go to Twitter and I'm going to let everybody know kind of what's going on behind the scenes. So Lamar Jackson wrote the following on social media, quote, a letter to my fans. I want to first thank you all for all of the love and support you consistently show towards me. All of you are amazing and I appreciate you all so much. I want you all to know not to believe everything you read about me. Let me personally answer your questions in regards to my future plans. As of March 2nd, I requested a trade from the Ravens organization for which the Ravens have not been interested in meeting my value. And everyone that's ha- that has met me or been around me know I love the game of football and my dream is to help a team win the Super Bowl. You all are great, but I had to make a business decision that was best for my family and I, no matter how far I go or where my career takes me, I'll continue to be close to my fans of Baltimore, Flock Nation, and the entire state of Maryland. You'll see me again. And wanted to point out that the Ravens organization has not been interested in meeting his value. That is where Lamar Jackson finds himself on social media, dropping that uh, bombshell yesterday to which John Harbaugh then sat down. And of course, the first thing that he was asked about was the tweet from Lamar Jackson. And this is how everything went down there in Phoenix. I haven't seen the tweet. It's an ongoing process. Uh, I'm I'm following it very closely, just like everybody else is here. And uh, looking forward to a resolution. I'm excited thinking about Lamar all the time. I'm getting ready for Lamar. That's what I'm doing in our offense. We've got a new offensive coordinator. Very excited about Todd Munkin. Uh, we're in the we're in the lab right now, building the offense and putting it together with the terminology and the plays and things like that. And that's that's what you focus on as a coach. You made a decision to go with Lamar Jackson five years ago, right? Why? Because we love him. We love him. We love the way he plays. We love his mindset, his charisma, his style, uh, the way he's in the locker room. Everything about him, we love him. I love him personally. I love being the coach the team that he's playing quarterback for. So, there we go. That's the situation in Baltimore. A little bit messy, I would say. A little bit of a problem with everybody involved. It's hard for me to listen to a a tweet like that and take it with any seriousness. I mean, for starters, I mean, he wants out so bad, he's got a guy selling home gym equipment. (laughs) He's got calling around on his behalf to other teams. The Dolphins, which I know for a fact, he's trying to get in touch with them. Obviously, Lamar is from South Florida, and that's where this Ken guy lives. (laughs) It's a two for one. Hey, you sign Lamar, we'll give you a bow flex. I mean, I mean, my takeaway from it was was basically you either pay me my value or trade me because y'all not you guys aren't trying to win a Super Bowl. Like, I don't think Lamar Jackson believes they can win a Super Bowl. So it's like pay me or bust. I think that's can, what I took away from it. Can I? Can I? Because because obviously that's what he's saying in this, right? That, that's what he's trying to say to them. Here's what's so hilarious: is anyone out there right now can literally send in an offer sheet if they really want Lamar? They can send in an offer sheet right now to Baltimore, and in essence, Baltimore would have to match it, or they would let him go, and they get a couple of first round picks in exchange. That's what's hilarious. And if anyone wanted to trade for him, they would have put in an offer. They would have tried to make something happen at at this point. You know why? Because giving up two first-round picks for a quarterback who's been an MVP, who's as young as Lamar is, would be a steal. It's going to take more than just two first-round picks to get a trade done. And yet, no one wants him. And so that's not to say that the Colts or someone might not, after the draft, if they don't get the quarterback they want, they might not be interested in in Lamar Jackson then. But the reality is he, as in Lamar, has made this such a circus that he's made himself look bad in the process. Having a, a guy call up teams instead of just hiring an agent or hiring an attorney who's certified by the NFLPA, Turning down and talking about the offers you've turned down, $133 million fully guaranteed, which every single player in the history of the NFL would have probably taken, or at least strongly considered and not tweeted about it, saying, oh, it's not good enough. 
it's bizarre to me the way things have gotten, but it's all on him. And I, I think if you're, if you're the Baltimore Ravens, this is why you're hesitant to want to commit to him long term. It's, it's these sorts of things that he's doing right now that make this look so much worse. I love Lamar Jackson, but this comes across as him pouting. So you're like Harbaugh. Yeah, you know, that was in my notes too. Temper tantrum. That was that was in my notes. It just, like doesn't it strike you as somebody who's literally throwing a temper tantrum on social media because they didn't get their way, and so now they they're trying to direct traffic uh, over to a website so he can answer fans' questions. And, like, just the, the behavior, the constantly going to Twitter, uh, you know, the, the buddy slinging bow flexes in a field in Fort Lauderdale somewhere who's calling up teams trying to get an offer sheet. I want to get a trade without realizing the Ravens could just slap the tag on you and get a couple of firsts in return. Like, I love Lamar Jackson, love everything about him, but it seems like he's pouting. That's how this comes across. Well, he's definitely – not happy about where the situation is. I mean, in an ideal situation, he gets the deal that he wants. There is no drama and you continue to move forward. It's in the moments where you don't get exactly what you felt you were worth. You don't get it done in the manner of which you would want to get it done. And when the way you handle it, in those situations, in those scenarios, in a lot of ways is a part of your your resume, it's a part of your your reputation as well. And and so this has become a toxic um, exchange, a, a toxic deal. I almost feel like at this point it's getting maybe it's there, but it's it's if not there, it's dangerously close to it being so toxic that it's almost like you can't give him a contract you you can't go forward with him um just based off of what he's he's letting the public know you know in terms of how he feels about baltimore i, I think but, but it's if you're any other organization and you're watching this that's a part of his him? resume well it's now a part of his resume and that's that is a part of your interviewing process like it, so it's, you're right it, it does create that that feeling from other teams like why would i why would we want to end up in the same scenario that baltimore is in right now like when people like sit there and go well justin herbert he hasn't won an mvp and they're starting negotiations. He might sign a $500 million deal. Okay, so what, Lamar deserves a $500 million deal j- just because he's got an MVP? Look at all the baggage. Look at, look at all what a team's going to have to deal with, with the way he's handled this entire situation. No one wants it. The reality is, you know what this isn't? It's not professional. Like, that's how Lamar Jackson is coming off right now. It's not professional. He's not being professional in any capacity. And, and let's just take into account this. So March 2nd, he makes this trade request, right? Here's what the Ravens have done since then. They've signed Nelson Aguilar, a wide receiver. They've brought in Todd Munkin this offseason to revamp the offense. He's one of the better and respected offensive minds. They drafted Rashad Bateman in the first round in 2021. They've continually built up the offensive linemen around him. They drafted Tyler Lindenbaum at center in the first round of last year's draft. They signed Zeitler in 2021 and Morgan Moses to help shore up their offensive line. They've done nothing but try to continue to build this team around his skill set to let him be successful. I mean, the reality is he's a special dynamic player, but he's not a player who's been able to excel purely playing from the pocket. That's okay. No one's saying he has to be. But to sit there and act like Baltimore hasn't done a lot to help appease him and help him win – You're lying. And so this whole thing right now comes off as incredibly unprofessional with the way he's conducting himself. I think regardless of if it if it appears that Baltimore is doing the right thing or not, it still comes down to the way you handle it. Right. I mean, you don't have to like the way things are being handled. And I would just say, because I, I, you know, for me, I, I always support the player like I'm always player pro player but there's also a way you go about doing what you're doing and and how you handle your business and I just I just feel like it's it's accurate like I can't 
I would love to be able to say like Q, like that's that's not that's not it. Like that that's that's incorrect. This is a guy who deserves what he deserves. You know what we would be saying if if Lamar Jackson has said nothing and has been quiet the whole entire time and at at the best at at best have somebody who's at least certified so that certain rumors if rumors start to hit and you're doing things correctly people will be your mouthpiece for you he's that good he's that good where people will be your mouthpiece for you it's like you got to hold the line when you're in negotiations you got to hold the line it's like you got to wait like the whole saying you got to wait to see the white of their eyes like hold it hold hold he's not holding he's not holding and and it's sad and it's unfortunate because regardless of if he's right or if he's wrong we'll start keeping score and we'll we'll start measuring differently than what we would have if we were being pro player now he puts he puts people like me he puts people in the media that would want to support and want to back him up he puts us in a non it's it's we don't have any leverage i don't have any leverage to sit here and say lamar jackson he's right he needs to be compensated so so on and so forth i could give a whole lot of arguments as to why he should be paid just as much as any other quarterback in the league especially Deshaun Watson if he's if you're using him as the barometer but when you start to come unraveled and you start to say things like you basically sent out a a, a, a thank you note a, a parting ways note that's a college note when I'm declaring for the draft and I'm leaving school that's a college note <laughs> <laughs> That's the note that you, you send out to your fans. It's just, to me, you're trying to defend yourself. You, you're, you're putting things out there that can't be taken back. And you're creating damage where now it's all about damage control. And in these scenarios, there's no such thing as damage control because you're negotiating. So I, I, it's, it's bad. It's it's bad. It could have been handled a whole lot better. Um, and I think less would have been way, way more for Lamar Jackson in this scenario. You know, Brady is a big – he's one of those guys that goes on Twitter and scores fights. Like, he'll be watching a boxing match. He'll score the fight on Twitter. He'll watch a UFC fight. He scores it on Twitter. Uh, if you're scoring this fight right now between the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, uh, he's down on the cards, and we're getting really late into the fight. Uh, in mm. fact, it's, it's pretty much a knockout. It's yeah. just bizarre to me when he talks about like wanting to be somewhere else. I'm like, dude, <laughs> anyone right now <laughs> can submit an offer to have you come play for them, and they are not. Like Washington reiterated that they're not in on Lamar Jackson. Like teams are only coming out and saying they're not in on you. And to me, it has everything to do with the fact that when you look at every other quarterback that's going to be signed, it's the manner in which they're handling themselves. It's not about talent. Lamar is one of the most talented players that has ever played this game. It's about how he's conducting himself. If you're doing something where you're causing teams to potentially be fined $50,000, which basically you're doing something illegal, if that's how you conduct business, I'm sorry, this league doesn't want to work with you. And that's, a, and that's in essence what he was doing by having some Ken guy who's slinging you know, gazelles around or whatever he's doing, <laughs> calling around teams. Like it, it's, the entire thing is incredibly, incredibly unprofessional. And that now plays a part in why teams might be hesitant to give him the offer that he's looking for. 